Bearing pointer navigation is one of my favorite things to discuss. In this video, I'm gonna show you using a G1000 how you can navigate not just directly to a waypoint or away from a waypoint, but how you can navigate specific courses to and away from those waypoints. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to The Finer Points. I am so happy to announce you guys that on May 24th of this year, in just a few weeks, we're gonna begin releasing the flight chapters to our instrument course. If you haven't seen the app, the flight chapters are where I take you in the airplane with me. Uh, we rig the cameras right at the student's eye view, and I take you out and I show you all the tips and tricks that I've learned from decades of teaching, how all of this knowledge comes together. It's great for experienced pilots, it's great for new pilots, and it's been so fun for me to go out and film this instrument content, which uh, is a bit of a specialty for me. So I'm gonna show you in this video a little sneak peek here because when we were out filming last week, I realized Bearing pointer navigation is uh, is one of my favorite things to discuss because we all thought it was dying with the ADF years ago, right? No more NDBs, no more ADF. We don't have to learn how to do that single needle navigation. Uh, but then along comes glass panels, right? And every glass panel has some form of bearing pointer navigation, or most do anyway. In this video, I'm gonna show you using a G1000 how you can navigate not just directly to a waypoint or away from a waypoint, but how you can navigate specific courses to and away from those waypoints. Let's take your game up one notch, and if you wanna see this stuff or see the Ground School app, make sure you get a free three-day trial at learnthefinerpoints.com. Let's go to the airplane and see how this works. All right, you guys, let's talk a little bit about bearing pointer navigation. Just remember when you're flying a Cessna G1000 equipped airplane, you hit PFD here and you've got two bearing pointers. The first bearing pointer toggles between uh, nav one, GPS and off. And the second bearing pointer between nav two, GPS and off, okay? so. Just remember, you cannot fly your second nav radio on bearing pointer one, and you can't fly your first nav radio on bearing pointer two. But once you get those bearing pointers up, they point at the station, okay? So it can be a GPS, it can be a VOR, it can be an intersection. You can get them to point at almost anything, anything you can get into your GPS or your nav radios. And there are two golden rules about any kind of bearing pointer navigation. This could be an ADF, an NDB, right? Or it could be a... Uh, bearing pointer like we have here in this glass panel airplane and either way these two things are true one thing that's true the head of the needle will always 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 point toward the station or to the course now in reality it's only pointing to one thing it's pointing to the station but I want you to think about it like it's pointing to the station or to the desired course you want to get to the station okay that's an important part of how we use it the second thing that's always true is that if you're not turning or going backwards, that head always falls. The head of the needle will always fall. If you hold your wings level and you fly in any direction, doesn't matter which direction you go, the head of the needle will always fall. That's one of the golden rules, all right? So let's look at how we actually use this thing in the airplane because there are times where you might want to get your you know, main CDI set up to receive an ILS or something and you want to navigate outbound on a radial using a bearing pointer off your tail. Now, you can do that. You can do it with precision, especially if it's a GPS and not an ADF, okay? So let's first look at what homing is. I think everyone knows this part. Everyone knows that if I just make the needle stand vertical here at the 12 o'clock, there we go, that eventually I'll end up at that station, okay? And that's true. It's pointing directly to the station. That's called homing. If I keep flying this, I will end up at that station. But what if I want to end up at that station headed east, right? Like what if I want to navigate inbound on the 270 degree radial? How would I do that, all right? And the way you do that is a uh, three-step process. The first thing you're going to do is parallel your desired course. So if I said I wanted east, that's the, you know, I want to arrive headed east from the west, then the first thing I'm going to do is head east. And let's note some things here. So we turn to a heading of east. We parallel the course. Now, we note the amount of needle deflection. And don't note that it's pointing at 115. Note the degrees of deflection off the 12 o'clock. So it's 10, 20, 
25, 25 degrees, let's say, 25 degrees to my right. So the next step is to turn toward the needle twice the amount of deflection. Now, twice is a bit arbitrary. We're gonna first turn toward it the same amount, 25, and anything after 25 is an intercept angle. But let's give ourselves a decent one because we're pretty close, we're 9.7 away. So I'll give us a decent intercept, something like that, right there. Okay, now I'm gonna hold 160 here, and what did we say about the head of the needle? He said that the head of the needle will always fall. Always, Jason? Yes, always. It will always fall. So when the head of the needle is pointed at east, when it falls down to east there, we're gonna turn inbound on it and be on the 270 degree, degree radial, flying inbound toward the station headed east. Watch how this works. Now, we have a reasonable um, intercept angle here, a pretty good one, it's like 70 degrees at the end of the day. So we're gonna lead this turn by quite a bit. Hopefully it'll work out, but I'll show you how to fine tune it and fly these needles with precision. Uh, these bearing pointers are absolutely flyable. Okay, there's 110, so the head of the needle is now falling through 110, you guys can see that. And if we just hold our heading here, wings level, eventually it'll fall through uh, 105, as it's starting to do now. And once it gets to about, well, I don't know, 100, we're gonna turn toward east and uh, lead it by that much, just to see we're still seven and a half miles away, so. There we go. That looks like it's almost at one zero zero. I'm gonna let it go another two degrees. Oh, and we're about seven degrees off, I think. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn in on it. Yeah, something like that. Let's try it, okay? So standard rate. We're gonna make this turn. We're using our inverted V to make sure I don't climb like I did last time. There we go. Standard rate turn. Okay, the head of the needle always falls. Now, if you know you're not going to, if like the head's not going to fall in time, you can stop short. Remember, the head of the needle always falls. So there's no no need to turn all the way toward it if you know that it's still pointed at 095. I think I, you know, I started that turn there obviously too early. Uh, but here it goes, 09 or 5. We'll wait a little longer. The head is falling. All right, let's try that. This time, let's go for it, and we'll see what it's like to fine-tune it. So here we go, we're coming around, we're 3,500, we've got our inverted V, we're turning standard rate. And, oh, we're just gonna go right to east, right? So let's go to it and see what happened. Look at that, we're so darn close, but we're still, the needle is still two degrees to our right. What's the problem with that? What do we say about the head of the needle? That's right, it always falls. So even if it's two degrees, is gonna fall, so it's death by a thousand cuts here. So let's go to the right, more than two degrees here. Let's go one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. We'll go right about there and wait for the head to fall exactly on east. We want it exactly on east. We're not gonna accept that little slop. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, and this is fine tuning. Now, at the end of the day, there might be a wind correction angle. We'll have to figure that out. We've got four knots of crosswind from the uh, north. Let's see if we can't fine tune this bearing pointer navigation such that we are inbound on the 270 degree radial. Okay, now one thing to remember when you're using these bearing pointers is that what looks like a small deviation on a bearing pointer would look like a large deviation on a course deviation indicator, right? You know, if it's five degrees off on a bearing pointer, it doesn't look that bad. It's like, oh, it's pretty darn close, five degrees off. Five degrees off on a CDI looks pretty darn far, right? So keep that in mind. But there we are, we're inbound on the 270 degree radial, and we did that by navigating on our bearing pointer. All right, you guys, and the bearing pointer navigation works exactly the same off the tail, only you're going to visualize the six o'clock precision here as your zero point, just like we visualized the 12 o'clock as the zero point when we're working off the nose. You know what I mean when I say zero point, where I was saying, you know, we don't really look at what number this is, 030 or north or south or 210. What you do is you see this as 10 degrees right of your zero position, 10 degrees left of your zero position. Down here you would see this as 10 degrees right of your zero position, so on, right? So it's not so much about the numbers as it is about the degrees to which the head of the needle is off what you want. So, for example, if I just put that needle 
uh, the head of that needle on my six o'clock position here. Let's just do that, okay? So something like that. Good, now the VOR is directly behind us. We're flying outbound on the zero to, I don't know, zero two two degree radial, right? And that's fine. That's like the opposite of homing, right? We can tell that we're on this thing, but what if we really wanna be on the zero three zero, right? Like we wanna be outbound on the zero three zero degree radial because we're going to intercept an approach course or something like this. And we're close, but we're 10 degrees off. And remember 10 degrees on a VOR would be like a full scale deflection. So the rules are the same. The first thing we're going to do is parallel the course that we want. And again, over time, you probably won't have to parallel it. You'll be able to visualize this in your head. Okay, now we note the amount of needle deflection. Okay, looks like five degrees of needle deflection to the right. So we turn toward the head of the needle because what's one of the golden rules? One of the golden rules is that the head always points toward the course or to the station. So we turn two times toward it, especially when it's a small deflection like five degrees, two times toward it is not a big deal. All right, and then we're waiting again for the head to do the second golden rule, the head always falls. So here we're just waiting for the head of the needle to fall to 210. And when it does, we're going to be outbound on the 030 degree radial. You could say to me, Jason, well, hey, when you're, when you're outbound, I guess you could think the tail rises. Like, yeah, you could, but the KISS principle, the keep it simple, stupid principle says, let's not. <laughs> says, let's work off the head. The head of the needle always points toward the station. The head of the needle always points toward the course. And the head of the needle always falls. All right? Good. So we're just waiting for the head of the needle to fall. When it does, we'll be outbound on the 030 degree radial. And the speed with which it falls, of course, depends on how far away you are from it. Um, if you're right on top of the VOR, that stuff will move fast. If you're really far away, it'll move slow. Um, and the head of the needle, you know, you might see it do something other than fall when you're turning. All right, and there we are. Let's allow a moment to turn. So let's call it right there. We'll put this on 030. Now watch this. We just did it. Now we're navigating outbound from the Concord VOR exactly on the 030 degree radial going to intercept whatever course is in front of us, okay? So it works exactly the same off the tail as it does off the nose. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. I hope you uh, enjoyed that tip about bearing pointer navigation. Make sure you get a free three-day trial of the Ground School app. It is a perfect app for experienced pilots, for new pilots. Uh, I promise there is stuff you will learn in there. Also, on May 21st, I'm joined by RH from the podcast Opposing Bases. Uh, we're doing free monthly webinars now, so there's a link in the description on where you can sign up for that. That. Please leave a comment below, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.